the chapter that we both got uh, the joy to be able to read that is going to be in your book and you're you know, working, working on this awesome book, uh, about, uh, fueling, uh, aging athletes. There's so much in the microbiome in that chapter, cause that's what it's focused on. And just to start off, I was, some of it I knew, right. From, from the, from the work that we do and some of it I did not. And one, one aspect that I thought was really curious and very intriguing is that the microbiome affects one's biological age. Can you talk to that and and go into what that means and why? Yeah, sure. Um, so when we look at people that are super centurions that are very long lived, in, in other words, they live past a hundred, um, what we find is their microbiome is actually quite diverse, very um, abundant, and they produce a lot of postbiotics that are associated with decreases in inflammation and improvements in insulin sensitivity. Okay, I need to stop you for a second. Uh, I should have asked you this when you were talking about, I, yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't really know what postbiotics are. So postbiotics are the metabolites that are produced when our bacteria break down and uh, carbohydrates, basically in fiber and prebiotics. So we have prebiotics. That's what our microbes feed on. Um, so this can be starches, it can be fiber, it can be polyphenols even. Um, then we have the postbiotics, uh, which are metabolites. Um, and so the three that are most studied are um, butyrate, acetate, and propionate. And so really, to, to, from a health perspective, what you really want is to foster bacteria in your gut that promote higher production of these postbiotics, these short chain fatty acids, as well as other ones that I talked about, like equal, uh, as well. Um, and so uh, when, when you, like I said, when you have a more diverse microbiome and abundance of microbiome, then you have tend to have better insulin resistance you, or less insulin resistance. You tend to have less inflammation. And so the, the, uh, the older adults that they looked at definitely had much higher levels of these postbiotics. And so it makes sense because part of the aging, of course, again, goes back to inflammation. It goes back to not being as insulin sensitive. And so you have sort of cardiometabolic issues as you age. Um, so again, it, it's hard to sort of identify cause and effect. Um, there, there is sort of an aging process, you know, the, the gut does age, right? We, it does to a degree, but one of the most commonly cited benefits um, to aging is, is consuming a high fiber diet. Tell us about yep. your thoughts on diet uh, and how important it is to be healthy as we age, even if we're running um, or exercising regularly or even doing the ultra marathons and things that you do. Yeah. Yeah. So like, you know, a lot of I see this in, in, in a number of older or age group athletes in particular. I think pro athletes are getting better about this. But one of the assumptions that uh, masters athletes make is that I run, I exercise a lot, therefore it doesn't matter what I eat. Um, and, and so they assume that this is going to protect them from age-related conditions like heart disease or cancer or whatever. Um, and so... I, I tend to think the opposite. I actually think the more you exercise, the more healthy you need to eat because exercise in, a, in a, and of itself is stressful. What we do as athletes is not health promoting. I mean, to a degree it is. I mean, there's definitely health benefits. Now, it's interesting when you look at population curves. Well, can you, I just want to make sure that – I so, just want yeah, – oh, okay, yeah. maybe you're going to go. I just want to make sure that people understand they can't chuck out the exercise even though it's right. stressful, because right. it's a good stress. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um, but when we look at population studies and health outcomes, such as cardiovascular disease, cancer, and so on, we see the big, biggest benefit is when people go from nothing to moderate levels of exercise. And then, and then the curve goes back up with higher levels of exercise. Um, and so... You know, the question, of course, is, is this because they're eating more unhealthy food? Because often that's the justification. If I 
eat 2000 calories a day. And then I start to train for a marathon. Now I eat 3000 calories a day of a, of a terrible Western diet. The poison is in the dose, right? Um, and so we do see that uptick in, in um, premature death, cardiovascular, deaths from cardiovascular disease, deaths from cancer, and so on. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, as an older athlete, I, I eat healthy in order to be able to train and train a lot uh, versus, versus the other way around.